Hey guys, what's up? Charles Float here and welcome back to the channel and welcome to a brand new series I have named Digital Gods where I'll be interviewing six, seven and even maybe eight or nine figure founders about how they made their online wealth using all sorts of tips and tricks you have likely never seen or heard of before. So in today's episode, I'm going to be interviewing Kival Shah and for the first couple of episodes, I'm going to be in the my old house because I was in the process of moving when I recorded these first few episodes and I'm now in this new house. I have this brand new office as you can see behind me. However, it is not kitted out. It is not finished yet and when you see me in the uh, latter half of this season, of this first uh, season of Digital Gods, you will be seeing a lot better studio background. But no fear, this first episode is absolute fire and Kival is dropping some serious knowledge bombs about how he took his agency from zero to over a million dollars in annual revenue in just 18 months at the grand old age of 24 years old. Stick with me, make sure to like, comment and subscribe and tell me in the comments down below who you'd like to see in the next video or the next few videos and who you'd like to see me grill next on this series. Thank you and peace. Thank you for joining us on the uh, Digital Gods episode uh, number one. You're the first guest we're having. Um, I thank you for oh. coming on so much. It's kind yeah. of uh, something that's been coming for a long time. I feel that I should have probably interviewed you maybe a year ago or two years ago <laughs> or something um, because we are the uh, two biggest SEOs on Money Twitter right now. <laughs> and, uh, and I feel like yeah, that's, yeah. It's so. <laughs> <laughs> and that's may, maybe, uh, maybe not the best of things, but <laughs> I <laughs> I, yeah. I'm glad that uh, I'm glad that you have had the the opportunity to be there with Ty Franklin and stuff though, so that's all good. So, uh, <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> so, so uh, just for the people that don't know you and don't know what you're about and stuff, who are you? How did you get started in SEO? And how did you get started running your own agency? Yeah, yeah, man. So, um, you know, I started doing SEO over ten years ago. I've been doing it for a really long time. Um, I think one of the first sites I started, so like my whole thing when I got into SEO was I just, I was really in the websites for whatever reason, right? Like I wanted to build a site that had an audience that read my content and, and kind of create like a community, right? Like I wanted like that kind of community engagement. I wanted, I wanted to create a community online, right? So I started writing blogs about pretty much all the stuff that interested me as a kid. And, you know, I, I had a bunch of blogs and they all, most of them kind of failed, right? I think I wrote a blog about Halo 3. Um, I think I wrote a blog about like, about like RuneScape, right? Keep in mind, like I was like in like early middle school, late high school at this point. Um, and most of them just kind of failed because I was just kind of writing content and then just like I was getting into traffic. So I was trying to figure out like, how do I grow traffic to a blog? How do I get people to read what I'm writing? And, you know, that's what I kind of stumbled, stumbled upon SEO, which is, you know, an organic way, a free way, you know, to bring traffic. I didn't have money to run ads, obviously, at the time. Um, and you know, it was all content stuff. It's not like I was trying to make money off of it anyway. So that's when I kind of went down the rabbit hole of SEO. Um, but back in like, you know, what was it? Maybe like 2009, 2010, I think when I was really getting into it, there wasn't like a ton of resources for SEO at, the, at like at the time, right? Like it was really, I mean, people were writing about it, but it was really difficult to like learn. So, I mean, I spent just hours and hours and like the amount of hours I put into trying to like learn SEO, like I can't even like recall at this point. Like I remember I spent probably like, I don't know, eight hours in one day in front of my computer trying to figure out how to submit a site map. <laughs> and back then it wasn't as simple as just having a Yoast plugin, right? Like you had to create the site map and like submit it. And it was, I mean, there just wasn't any resources. It was really difficult to learn at the time. Um, but, you know, like I... I found, I remember pro blogger was like a big site back then, um, for SEO and, you know, it still is, but like back then, like that was a good resource. Um, and you know, I just started implementing all the stuff that I learned and I wasn't very good. Like, I don't think I really made any money off of SEO for like a good five years or so. I think like in, in late high school, I actually created, um, a site about the TV show, the, you know, that show Avatar, the last airbender, right? <laughs> Ang for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, at that time that the new series of legend of Korra was coming out and I was just thinking, I was like, okay, like this is a brand new show. Like I think it would be a cool blog just to write about. Cause it was like, I was just looking for my interest. Right. And then I wrote it and I started doing like 
you know, some minor SEO stuff, some link building. I was doing a lot of tier link building, a little, little bit of Wikipedia link building too. Um, and then just writing kind of the best content I could. And um, so I ended up getting like six and a half million views in like, you know, two years or so. So that was kind of my first successful SEO run after just like years of failure. Right. Um, and then after like I succeeded with that, I was like, wow, you know, I can do this. I'm like, decently good at it. So, you know, from there, I um, just started doing a lot of internships uh, with, with people like over, over the summer, like I never had, you know, one of those big internships that, you know, kids my age were having, because I was really bad at school, right? Like college, like, I mean, I dropped by the time I dropped out of college, I had like a 2.2 GPA. <laughs> so I wasn't very good at college, I wasn't going to get one of those like big internships. So I just went to like internships.com and just racked up as many online internships as I could. So I was running sometimes like five internships at once online, all SEO. Right. And I was just doing SEO for, that was like kind of my first like client SEO experience. Um, and from there, um, you know, eventually I ended up dropping out of college. I didn't have a degree and I was like, well, what, what do I have going for me? What's, what's the one thing I'm good at? I'm like, well, it's SEO. Even though I went to college for, comp sci and then econ when I failed out of comp sci. <laughs> um, and so I took my first job at a digital marketing agency. Well, it was, it was, an, SEO, it was an SEO agency. Um, and I realized that the way these people do SEO, it isn't great. Like it, it, at the agency side, right? Like they're so invested in their process. And I remember trying to change their process multiple times. I go to them like, hey, like, look, writing 500 word blog posts, it's not, you know, a great idea. You know, your link building strategy doesn't work. <laughs> like this is not really link building. This is like kind of black hat stuff. So I realized that, you know, by, by running an agency kind of by, by being very process oriented, right. By having everyone run all the clients through the same process, the clients weren't getting the best results that they could. So that's when I decided to build my own agency. You know, I'd been doing SEO at this point for over 10 years. I was like, I feel like I can get results. I know how to do it. And yeah, I just started taking on clients. Um, I, you know, I first started on Twitter, uh, just kind of talking about SEO, talking about my experience with it, explaining some of the strategies I use. And then I had people reach out to me uh, to do their SEO, I had success with them, and it just kind of snowballed into what it is today. Awesome. So, so I want to actually ask you how big your agency is without being too cheeky and asking you to reveal your MMR and things. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so how many employees do you have? How many clients do you have? And wh when was it that you actually got started with this agency as well? Yeah. What, so, um, dates, sorry, yeah. 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 So let's say, so in terms of size, right, we, we, we run about 55 clients right now. Um, mm -hmm. So pretty happy with the growth in the last few years. Uh, we have eight employees, so it's a pretty lean team, right? We don't, we don't like, you know, everybody is in-house too, right? We don't really uh, outsource stuff, stuff overseas. Like we have VAs, right? For like some of the small stuff, uh, which I don't really count as like team members. We have a bunch of VAs, but, um, you know, the, but our core team is all in-house. All of our writers are in-house. Um, and yeah, I mean, like, I like kind of the team structure we built. It's not like a super corporate -y environment, right? It's kind of just like, you know, get your work done. And as long as it's done right, like, I don't care. Like, I don't care if people work two hours a week, one hour a week, right? As long as, I mean, people don't, but, you know, as long as all the work gets done, I'm happy, right? And, you know, we're all just here trying to do our best work for clients and uh, just really, like, we're very results driven, right? Um, and in terms of when I got started, so I've only been doing this. So I got started two years ago, uh, taking on clients, but I, I really started doing it full time. Uh, I think it was not last October, but the October before. So October 2019, no, no, we're in 22. 2020. 20. <laughs> so October 2020 um, is when I like really went full time into it because I had some like contract stuff kind of going on in the background as I was building the agency. Um, just because it's always scary to take that leap, right? Into like just being totally on your own, right? So I had like a part time contract opportunity running in the background where I was actually doing Google ads and some SEO for, for, for an agency. Um, and then around 2020, like October, 2020, I think I hit like 30, 40 K like monthly recurring revenue. So then I was like, okay, well, 
you know, those guys are getting pissed off at me because I wasn't getting all the work done on time because I was so focused on my clients because obviously I put that first. Um, and then I was like, all right, this is it. It's time to take the jump. And, you know, it was like one of the best decisions I ever made because it's scary to do it. But like, as soon as you free up that time and you're fo like fully dedicated to, you know, what you're doing, you know, you see like that MMR graph, like really skyrocket. And uh, yeah, now I'm on my own. <laughs> yeah. So a lot, a lot of people would say that's like quite a big gamble to make, but I, I, I'm, I wouldn't actually say it's that big of a risk right just because you had all of these backups in place and things and you you got to a, a very healthy monthly retainer amount uh, before you actually made a complete transition um, but it's it's really awesome that you you know uh, managed to keep yourself going even though you had other uh, duties and stuff to keep, to keep you busy yeah. um so i want to talk about the tools and stuff that you use day to day in the agency because i, I think that you know, everybody knows HFs and stuff, right? especially in the SEO industry and things. Um, but are there any other tools people perhaps don't know or anything else that, help, that helps you run the agency day to day? Yeah, so HFs, that's, that's the obvious one, right? Um, are you screaming frog? Um, that's a good crawler. I know there are like a couple of crawlers, like um, it was like light something, like crawl or light bulb or I, I forget. Yeah, what it was. Uh, yeah. Right. SEO bulb, SEO bulb. <laughs> SEO, yeah, okay, yeah. See, like, I, I know there's like a couple other options. I haven't used them too much just because I've gotten used to Screaming Frog and, you know, kind of kind of does the job. Um, outside of that, I like using Keyword Finder by Mongols. That's a really good one to find those like very granular uh, keyword search volumes. Um, I like using Answer the Public too. That's another great one. I, I like using that um, to kind of build out a blog structure, right? Whether it be finding very granular blog topics or, you know, rounding up keywords for one of those really big kind of pillar pieces of content. Um, you know, answer the public is great. Um, outside of that, I think that's pretty much it. I think that's mostly, I mean, I, I'd have to probably look just to double check, but I, I think like those are the main ones that I use on a day-to-day -day basis. That's your main stack, basically. That's yeah. the main stack, yeah. Keep it lean, right? <laughs> 100%. Yeah. It, you know, with, with Ahrefs, it's like you almost don't need that much because there's so much packed into Ahrefs, right? Like, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of other tools you could use. Like we looked at, um, there's this one, I think it's, I forget the name of it, but it helps you like kind of determine like what anchor text and stuff to use uh, for link building. It helps you keep track of it. We almost kind of use that, but then we ended up kind of building our own anchor text system that works a little bit better um, yeah. just because, you know. Anchor text, I feel like, really kind of changes from, uh, you know, industry to industry. You really have to kind of look at it from that perspective. So, you know, we, we try to do um, as much. We try to keep everything, you know, less tool-based, right? Because when you start using tools, that's when you really kind of get into, like, the processes, right? But, um, you know, we try to do everything as manually as possible. Um, oh, and, and Surfer. So, we, of course, we use Surfer SEO, too, for, yeah. you know, blog content. Awesome. So, so um, you're, let's just say it straight, right? You're a busy dude. Um, we could yeah. only fit you in for an hour here today. Um, <laughs> how, how do you manage your time, client, staff, client work? You know, and, and being an agency is not just a singular job. And you have to also be the manager of multiple different uh, kind of fields within your own field as well. So how do you actually go about managing that time? Are there any things that you use to help manage time as well? <clears throat> yeah, you know, we have, I have a really, really good team, right? My team is, they're self-motivated and, you know, without my team, Team, I wouldn't be able to do all the stuff I do on a daily basis, right? Because, like, for me personally, like, my role in the agency is I, I spend a lot of time on onboards for sure, right? For like brand new clients, because we are focused on personalization and I don't want to lose touch on those onboards because, you know, that's the most important part of the campaign when you're kind of building out that foundation, right? So, I want to touch all of the, all of the onboarding and make sure we have the right keywords, making sure we're out, we're having all the technical stuff. Um, but once we kind of build out a plan, my team is really good at implementing that plan, right? From the link building side to, you know, the writing the blog content to updating the site, fixing errors, running audits and stuff like that. Um, so I, I focus a lot on the onboards. Um, and then, you know, I, I really, my whole thing is that, you know, I want to work more on the business rather than in the business, right? So when I'm doing onboarding, I'm obviously working in the business. And that's just something that's, you know, a bit unavoidable right now. If I want to you know, make sure we're getting results, right? Which is the most important thing. Um, <clears throat> but outside of that, I do spend a lot of time trying to work on the business. So that's, you know, growing on Twitter, posting content, writing case studies, um, just stuff like that to just kind of get the word out about what we're doing and, and the results that we're getting. Because, 
you know, that's really our big selling point is that we're personalized SEO. And you just don't get that with a lot of agencies, right? It's like you get on calls because I, I get on sales calls too, because, you know, I'm kind of the face of my agency. I, I think it's unfortunate in the sense that I'm the face because there's a lot of pros and cons to like, you know, being a personal brand versus like, you know, um, having like your agency as your main brand. But because this is more of like a personal branded agency, I like running some, running some of the sales calls, at least right now, I, I do have time to do that. Um, but yeah, I mean, just kind of on that note of like working on the agency, um, it is important for me to kind of spend time to, you know, grow on Twitter again, like I said, write the case studies and just, you know, show people what we do that, we're, you know, we're personalized and that we're, we're not here to run you guys through the same process as a lot of the other agencies might do and get you guys actual results. Yeah. So it's, it's that personalized factor that really sets you apart. Um, so I have, the next question is kind of a, a two in one question. Um, so it's, it's about lead generation for your agency, but a lot of people in the interviews that I've seen, a lot of agency owners, et cetera, talk about how they generate leads now. And I do want to ask you that, but I also want to ask you, how did you actually generate leads initially? So a lot, a lot of people who are starting out with agencies and stuff, they're like, where do I get leads from? How do I generate business? Um, so I have a two in one kind of question where I want to ask you yeah. how you first got leads for the business and yeah. how you now get leads for the business. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So um, the first, I mean, <clears throat> when I first got started, I got all the leads through through Twitter, right? It was like I was posting content, I was posting, um, you know, some of our client results on Twitter, and people would just DM me and be like, "Hey, you know, <clears throat> can we potentially get a campaign going with you guys and get on a sales call, close, and write and go from there?" Um, from then on, you know, I I really kind of looked towards other lead generation sources like Facebook, like, you know, running some Facebook ads. Um, I was kind of toying with the idea with Instagram, but what ended up happening was I still get all my leads through Twitter. And I'll, I'll tell you why that's the case. Why I didn't start running ads is because SEO is such a scummy industry, right? There's so many bad players in the SEO space that are there just to profit off of, off of people, right? So people are very weary about who they work with. So <clears throat> what I found is that when you're running ads and you're just kind of like, you know, people are booking calls with you and, or you're sending cold emails, right? Cause I send cold emails too. Um, I, I did LinkedIn outreach. The problem though, is that when people don't know who you are, there's no trust there, right? It's very difficult to close them. Um, people just, you know, they're not really, really willing to give you as much of a shot. And that's not to say it doesn't work, right? It definitely does work. You know, agencies run ads and they close clients and you know, it works. Well, for me personally, what I enjoyed was getting on calls with people who knew I who knew who I was and trusted me because they were a lot more willing to give the service a shot. And, you know, generally speaking, they always saw results. So I ended up just putting all my time and energy and growing on Twitter. And at this point, you know, at almost, you know, 27,000 followers on Twitter, um, I get leads, you know, from Twitter, obviously, but I get a lot of referrals to, you know, people who follow me on Twitter you know, they'll, if they know someone who's looking for SEO, they'll just refer them to me. Um, and so because of that, there's a lot more trust there and it is easier to close that way too. So as far as I'm concerned, like I just enjoy, you know, just posting on Twitter and getting leads that way because we limit our onboarding too. Like we're not, we're not trying to onboard, you know, 10, 15 clients a month. Like that's just too much for us, right? Like we're a smaller yeah. agency. So we limit our onboarding to about five to six clients a month. That's perfect for us. And Twitter has been great for, for that. Um, you know, I work with uh, with Nathan Gotch pretty pretty closely. Like I kind of do like monthly calls with him just for like coaching and stuff like that. And I remember one of the things he told me recently was grow as slow as you can in the sense that like, don't, don't try to onboard everybody, right? Really focus on bringing someone who's a good fit. So like if, if you're bringing on, you know, one or two clients who are a good fit rather than 10 clients where everyone's kind of iffy, it's way better because you're just going to have less churn, right? Because those guys who are kind of iffy, you're like, yeah, you know, maybe you can get them on and we don't do contracts either. Right. So, you know, maybe you get them on and um, you know, they stay for a couple months, but then they churn, right. It's way better if you grow slowly and just focus on really bringing on people who are good prospects, who are willing to give SEO a shot because you know, the truth is, is that there's a lot of people who are not patient with SEO. There's a lot of people, you know, who will get on, and they'll give it that four to six month range. But if it's not working, they'll give up on it. But the truth is that sometimes SEO can take two years, 
you know, it could take, it could take a really long time, especially if you're a brand new site in a very competitive space, that four to six month timeline is just an average. So we're looking for people who uh, believe in SEO and are willing to invest. And we're going to show them, you know, the, the month over month progress, right? We'll show them keyword rankings, but we don't want those guys who are just like, okay, six months, right? And then that's it, right? We want people who are open to the idea of investing in SEO because I'm, as I'm sure you know, like SEO is really a lifelong thing. You do SEO forever, right? It's not something where you just do it for six months and you're like, we're ranking, right? This is a serious thing and we're looking for serious prospects. Yeah, 100%. And I, I also want to just reiterate um, your point about you giving content and value to people and also posting your results to clients and things like that. And then them DMing you, right? So it's, it's a lot more of a, a personal and kind of, an authority position, right? For them to come to you rather than you putting ads out there or other kinds of media and things and, and then sign up as a lead. Um, yeah. I feel that way is a lot uh, a lot more of them coming to you rather than you going to them, right? So there's a lot more power in your yeah. hands and a lot more power in your ball court. So, so I, I definitely agree that it's, it's also been a, an amazing source of leads for me in terms of consultancy yeah. and in terms of just business partnerships and things. Like I've found so many awesome people from Twitter. It's actually insane. Um, so... Going from there, I want to kind of talk about how you actually get the clients and how you quote them and how you um, generate them and actually close them as a client. So I, I know that you still, I know that you do packages, I think, um, but I'm guessing you kind of quote a package towards a specific client. How, how do you go about doing that and how do you go about closing them as well? Yeah, for sure. So our packages, like they're, it's a pretty wide range. So generally speaking, our packages are three to 5,000 a month. Um, but if we're like looking at a very competitive space, like we have clients paying, you know, 7.5K a month. We have clients paying 10K a month, right? So we'll, usually what I'll do is <clears throat> I'll do some research on the site before I get on the call and kind of figure out like what a good package is for them right from the get-go. Um, <clears throat> because, you know, I mean, if a site has, because we mostly work in the e-commerce space, right? So if a site has like 20 collection pages that they want to rank, you know, that's going to take some time, right? They're going to need a much a much more aggressive package. And that's kind of how I, how I say, it, right? Like I tell them that like, you know, technically speaking, if you want, I'll take you on her lowest at 3K a month, right? But if you guys have a ton of collection pages, it's going to take a really long time. So I see like the different tiers of SEO is more aggressiveness, right? Like how aggressive are you willing to be with SEO? How quickly do you want to get this stuff ranking? And right. And like a lot of times people want to be aggressive, right? If they have the cash flow. Um, but sometimes people, you know, they want to get into SEO, but maybe they just don't have the cash flow to go for something very aggressive. So in that case, you know, maybe I'll recommend say like, hey, I, my suggestion is a four to five K a month package. But if you guys want to start off at the three K a month, we can do it. Right. And I can show you guys some progress in the beginning. You can see how our working relationship is, make sure we have good rapport and stuff like that. Um, and then once you start seeing results, we can bump up the package and give you guys some more link and, and content resources. So you guys start seeing some traction a little bit quicker. Yeah, that, That's an awesome kind of uh, sales <laughs> tactic as well, because there's kind of a bit of psychology going on there where they feel yeah. like hmm am, am i the cheap guy going for the 3k package or should i go for the 4k 5k and there's definitely some ego within business owners about not going for the cheapest package available um, and there's yeah. i believe i read some psychology many years ago about uh if you give people three options and you put a ten dollar twenty dollar and thirty dollar 90 percent of people will go for the middle option every time because that's just yep. the way they are that's just the way you're kind of trained to do it um so getting away from actually closing the clients and more into the seo side of things have you ever struggled with kind of tricky clients in terms of the actual ranking side? And how do you strategize or, or kind of re-strategize for a client who, who is struggling in terms of getting their rankings up? Sometimes it just happens though, right? Sometimes clients have been working the, in the past and stuff that comes to bite you in the ass. There's so many factors in SEO that sometimes you just can't get the 100% success that they were looking for. Um, mm -hmm. So how do, you, how do you, A, kind of deal with those tricky clients, but also how do you strategize for those tricky clients when your original strategies weren't 100% going to account plan? Yeah, no, it's, um, it's, it's tough. Like, I mean, there, there are definitely clients where like, you know, the campaign maybe isn't going as we expect. And I think, <clears throat> you know, our whole deal of personalization makes it easier for us to switch things up. Right. So if we have like, we had one client, um, I think actually you were, kind of working with us on this one. I remember I was talking to you about this one, but they were selling, selling yoga mats, uh, right? And anytime you're trying to rank a product page, I found personally that ranking product pages is a little more difficult than ranking just a collection page, right? Because you can't really link build 
to product pages. Google, like from what we've seen, the data we've seen, Google usually ignores it. Um, in some cases, maybe there's uh, some ranking movement, but for the most case, they they kind of ignore it. Um, but you know, anytime we have those tricky clients, because we're very personalized, like we have the ability to stop and just restructure the entire client. Like, right, we'll treat them like if we're seeing they're not getting results, we'll we'll essentially kind of like take them offline, but like not really, but like you know, stop our our kind of daily work and almost treat it like a brand new onboard. So we'll go through. We'll run audits again. We'll redo the keyword research. We'll figure out, um, you know, a better content strategy. We'll figure out a better link strategy, where to point the links, better anchor text. So like we'll redo the entire thing if we have to. And we've done it before. Like we've done it um, a couple of times, I recall. And usually when we go in and kind of redo the whole campaign, like we get it perfectly the, the next time. Because, you know, SEO, it's not an exact science, right? Like every, every um, you know, process or whatever that you might use for clients, it's, it's not going to work for all of them, right? So when you start off, you try to find the best process. If it doesn't work, then you can switch it. Right. And that, that's kind of the beauty of working with us is that we are able to kind of switch it. Cause we, like we look at rankings like week, week over week, basically. I mean, like I said before, you don't want to look at rankings daily, right? But we look at it week over week, make sure things are kind of trending in the right direction. Month over month is probably the best way to look at keywords. Right. But yeah, if we're seeing like, you know, stuff going downhill, <clears throat> you know, we'll go in and, and make those changes. We'll go in and redo some of the content. We'll redo some of the link building. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, awesome. That's that's perfect. Um, so, it, again, dealing with those kind of clients and dealing with stuff, last year was probably the most algorithm updates I've seen in a year. And I've been doing SEO for 14 years at this point. Um, so mm -hmm. has your agency been affected by any algorithm updates? And how do you handle the pressures that some clients will put on you because a lot of clients do this to uh, to a lot of agencies when they start seeing volatility, if things do yeah. go down or if things start moving around and stuff, and that happens in SEO anyway. Um, how do you handle the the both the clients and how how has your agency kind of uh, handled the effects of algorithm updates? Yeah, so um, we try not to focus too much on individual algorithm updates um, because at the end of the day, right, like it's really just about quality. If you're doing quality SEO, like your algorithm, the algorithm updates aren't going to affect you too much, right? If you're getting relevant links, if you're doing the right content, like writing quality content, if you're targeting the right keywords and stuff like that, generally speaking, it's not going to tank a site, right? Um, so, but more specifically, so like last year, we didn't really have any algorithm updates that affected us last year. Um, and I think that just goes to show that like, because we're doing very clean SEO, you know, it's not going to affect us that much. So you know, algorithm updates happened. A lot of them actually improved our clients. Like weirdly enough, like we didn't really see any clients that just absolutely tanked from them. Right. Um, now this, this year so far, January has been crazy. I don't know if, if, if I'm sure you've probably noticed, but it's been really up and down. So this is probably the, like one of the first few times where like, we're seeing some really big fluctuations, but it kind of goes back to, you know, when we, when we pitch clients and we bring them on board, we, we tell them like, Hey man, SEO is a long-term thing. Right. So usually with these algorithm updates, it'll dip a little bit when there's a lot of fluctuation, but usually it's still kind of that upward trajectory, right? SEO is not linear growth, right? It'll go up, it goes down, it goes up, it goes down. Right. So we explain to the clients like, Hey, yeah, you know, like there has some, there has been a lot of fluctuation in the SERPs recently. There's a lot of, um, you know, rankings that have been affected. We're still running a strong strategy that is, focused on quality right and you know if we see a client that goes from ranking with their keyword and then goes to like zero or like go, goes to like the 10 15 page then you know obviously that's something we'd want to look into more specifically but if we're seeing just general fluctuations we usually explain to the client like hey we'll, we'll get we'll get it back up right but seo again it's not linear growth it's something that takes time and you know six months from now like this you know, we, we won't even notice this, this algorithm update. Cause it's just like, it's just kind of a general dip right now. Yeah. That's, that's super interesting. And it's uh, awesome mm -hmm. that you can handle stuff like that because in general, I've seen so many agencies churn clients just out the door due to volatility that I think if they just put a little bit of a uh, helping hand on the way, they probably could have kept the client. So it's obviously yeah. worth a lot of money if you can handle the client's kind of fears and woes. Right. Yeah. So, uh, and kind of, we, yep. Oh, sorry. I was going to say, and like, we have like a lot of case studies where like, you know, we have a client who, you know, they want to rank number one for a particular keyword and, you know, we get them 
to, to, to the bottom of page one, right? Then an algo update hits and then they go to the bottom of page two and they're sitting there for a while. And then, you know, we've explained to them like, hey, just, just be patient. And, you know, then they eventually they go back up and now for like that one particular client, they're number one for their, for their main keyword. So um, yeah, it is really just about explaining the clients that like this is a time thing, right? Like we're, 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 we're putting you guys in the best possible position to rank. That's what our job as, as SEOs, right? Like we can't guarantee first page rankings or number one rankings, but we can guarantee that we'll do our best to put your site in the best possible position to rank. So it's like, if you give it time, you know, those rankings will go back up and that's what we've seen. So I show clients who are hit by those algo updates, some of those case studies and, and show them what we've been able, how we've been able to recover them. And usually they have the trust in us to stay on and they're happy because of it when they, you know, do see those rankings kind of go back up. Yeah, and, and having those case studies is, is quite powerful in the first place, I can imagine. Um, so, so kind of the last question before I, uh, I let you do all the promo you wish to do. Um, what, what, is, what do you think has been the number one driving force behind the success of your agency? Um, definitely growing on Twitter, by far. Um, yeah, it, it, it has been like literally life-changing like completely life-changing. Like I didn't think when I, when I started on Twitter that it would grow into what it was because, you know, truthfully, when I, when I started, um, when I started going on Twitter, like I was just trying to provide value. Right. I wasn't, I didn't really go into it with a sense that like, this is going to be a really good lead generation tactic. Like I feel like in my life, I've had a lot of, uh, a lot of big, big experiences. I've had a lot of ups and downs. The downs have been really bad. The ups have been pretty awesome. Right. Um, and so I just wanted to share that with kind of the business community and share my experience with SEO and and just be authentic. Right. Like that's my whole thing. It's like, I never, like, I don't really schedule tweets like some people do. Cause like, I'm not, you know, totally focused on just like the number of followers. Like I don't really care. Like my whole thing is about providing that kind of value. Right. So by, by providing that value, you know, I've come across as authentic, which I try to be. Um, and that makes it easier for me to close makes it easier for people, you know, to refer uh, prospects to me um, and really just grow the agency. Cause that's like the driving force behind the agency right now. Right. Yeah. So in terms of like agency success, yeah, without Twitter, I don't know where I'd be, you know, I'd be running ads, bringing on prospects who don't know who I am, don't trust me. And it's just, it's really tough territory in the SEO space specifically um, to bring on people who are cold because they have to trust you and be willing to pay you money for sometimes six to 12 months before they really start seeing results. Yeah, and, and I, I completely agree with you on the Twitter front, just because I think the platform allows you to grow so naturally and organically. And if you are being, like you said, genuine, authentic, and you're just providing value for free, then it's so easy for people to, you know, be in aligned with your brand, follow you, get it, get engaged, everything that you need to potentially warm up that lead and, and turn them into a sale, right? Um, so... As the final question, and, and thank you for coming on the show. This, uh, this has been very insightful, and I'm, I'm guessing a lot of agency owners and basically freelancers as well will probably be uh, very happy with this interview and, and, and get a lot out of it. Um, so how can business owners, and then specifically commerce business owners, hire you to do their SEO? Yeah, for sure. So our website is inboundpursuit.com. You can go there and you can fill out, uh, you, can, you can basically just fill out kind of a calendar form to book a call with me. I'll be on the sales call, right? It's not going to be uh, someone else. I, I handle the sales calls. Um, and you can also follow me on Twitter at SEO Kevil. Um, that's where I provide a lot of, you know, SEO strategies, kind of life tips. Just, you know, I just talk about my day to day, really try, try to keep it real. Right. But you can follow me there, um, see some of the client results I post there. And then, you know, on my website, there's also a bunch of case studies for you to, for you to take a look at. Um, we primarily work in the e-commerce space. Right. But if you have a local business or if you have a SaaS, you know, we're willing to still bring you guys on if we feel like we can help. So just book a call with me, you know, we'll see if it's a good fit. And if it is, we'd love to talk about working together. Well, thank you for coming on, Kevin. And, and I fully endorse anybody to go and follow you on Twitter as well. And uh, I'll, I'm sure we'll do another episode at some point, maybe later in the year or next year. And thank you once again for coming on. Absolutely. Thanks, Charles.